Hey there, next chapter. We're in the Monster Manual in the L's. And the Lamia, I don't know if that's how you're saying it. I don't want to say Lamia, because that sounds a lot like Laman. Uh, Lamas, excuse me. Uh, they have actually survived in their regular form into the new edition. Uh, and the art is a lot the same. Uh, and the important thing is they still have their powers. Typically, everything's depowered when it's moved in here probably to be more uh, palatable to newer players. So uh, a Lamia at challenge rating 4 is absolutely <clears throat> outstanding because what you got to look for is powers that are at will. So she has Disguise Self and Major Image. And of course, back in the day, she had uh, used the following spells once per day, Charm Person, Mirror Image, Suggestion, and Illusion as a wand. And so actually, if anything, she's gotten more powerful because that illusion uh, became a power became at will instead of once a day. And so, yeah, and then you have the Lamasu. I don't know if the Lamasu appears in other uh, books, but uh, it's just a, basically a mundane creature. It's a lawful good, genius intelligence, <clears throat> a good hit dice, and... Uh, but does have at-will powers of invisibility and dimension door. And, uh, oh, and spellcasting ability. Uh, lamprey, giant lamprey, obviously is not in there anymore. It possibly has been moved to the creatures section of the new monster manual. Larva, I don't think they are in 5th edition. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, these are souls that go down to uh, the lower planes, evil souls, and they're basically just a worm with a head. And... Uh, they are like um, money down there, and apparently liches use them. All right, let's move on. We're going to get through these pretty quickly. Uh, leech, a giant leech, leopard, leprechaun, lucrata. I don't think any of those find their way into the modern monster man. In fact, the elves are pretty, are pretty thin. Uh, let's just move ahead. Yeah, the next thing is Lich. So everything on this page has basically disappeared. And uh, like I said, I haven't... Uh, oh, hello. Sorry about that. I didn't uh, uh, zoom back out. So yeah, we have these things. Leprechauns are pretty awesome. Uh, I love fey creatures because they usually have a lot of... Uh, they're neutral and not good or evil, so you have to find different motivations for them. Uh, again, I'm not looking in Volos or Xanathars or anything, so for all I know, these creatures do appear there. Uh, Lich. So Lich gets a lot of attention starting from the very beginning. Let's take a look at this incredible art that they had. And uh, yeah, this is one of the quintessential monsters. Oh, excuse me. I thought it went all the way into the next uh, column, but it doesn't, so it's just this. And, uh, of course, Liches in 5th edition get a lot of really great uh, attention. They get a whole two-page spread, which sounds about right to me. And, of course, you can, you can do a lot with a Lich. And they are definitely a classic monster. Giant lizards over here in the classic monster manual, uh, they have moved to the back. And um, so Lizard Man, which, uh, by the way, some of the art in this original monster manual is just, it's really good. And, uh, and it's iconic, like people, people remember this. Look at that, isn't that amazing? And um, so let's see here. It's, um, uh, yeah, so let's, the Lurker Above actually, there was, there's three creatures in the Monster Manual that kind of got combined into one species. And that was the Lurker Above, uh, the, there was another one that's like a floor, I can't, I can't remember, I thought it was Lurker Below, but, uh, apparently not. Uh, boy, all right, we'll have to keep our eyes on that one. And then the Piercer actually were this is all the same thing. So let's take a look in the modern monster manual here, see what there is. Yeah, Lizard Folk get a whole two-page spread, they get different things. Uh, Lizard King actually, uh, with, that has a trident. Uh, that guy is in the, the Fiend Folio, so you have a very rare Fiend Folio appearance in the 5th edition um, Monster Manual. Yep, there you go. The original Lizard King. And, uh, of course, Lava Children, which I think are really, really cool. They disappeared. I mean, 
I think what happened is anything that was like too weird and offbeat, and there was a lot of that in the Fiend Folio, just didn't make it into the next things. Lycanthropes, one, two, three, four, five, six pages. Absolutely amazing. And of course, in the first Monster Manual, all those same ones appear. Uh, in fact, hold on, there's five different types here. Let tons of art on this page. Really fantastic. They did a good job. Uh, yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Yep, five different types. Now, um, the werebear, of course, uh, comes from myth. And uh, I don't know what, but I feel confident that that's the origins there. Uh, the werebear actually um, hails back to Tolkien. And a lot, of, a lot of this stuff that you find in these rule books is very Tolkien-esque. In fact, the whole game originally, where they had elf and dwarf as not a race, but a class, that goes back to, well, this game is all about pretending, having your own adventures with basically a Fellowship of the Ring type situation. So uh, Manticore, so now we're in the M's, guys. Hopefully we can keep going. Yes, it's recording. I'm at, oh, I'm only at six minutes. Kalu Kalei. Uh, oh, by the way, Magmen, frankly, I don't know where Magmens come from. Uh, do they come from the whatever it is? I think that may be kind of their answer to lava children. I, I don't know. I'll have to, to plead that I have no idea. Now, Manticore, of course, is a creature of myth. And uh, if you go to other sources, you'll see a lot of scorpion tails. And the D&D Manticore has spikes that it, uh, that it shows uh, on their tails. Now, uh, the first, to my knowledge, the first really classic appearance of a manticore, yeah, you know what's coming. Do you know? Do you know what module I'm going to show you? Go ahead, lock in your beds. S1, S2, excuse me. White Plume Mountain, check that out. Now, that is just such, oh, man, when we were young uh, teens and preteens, we were freaking out over this stuff, guys. It's incredible. This is still one of my favorite modules. It's not one of the best. Uh, I would love to take this and um, and redo it and actually run some people through it. That would be really fantastic. White Plume Mountain. Uh, yeah, so one of my dreams is to have permanent Valhalla and be doing tons of terrain and basically create this in three dimensions and run White Plume Mountain. Actually give it a plot and make it cohesive and muscular. But there you go, there's uh, a manticore appearing there, and it appears, oh, here's some interior art. Now, this was the art that was on the monochrome for this module. There you go, now that, that manticore looks evil, right? Isn't that great? I wonder if there's interior art of the manticore as well. Something tells me there isn't. There's an encounter area where they are existing. And this is what, oh, now you actually do kind of see them. See them in this encounter area at the very middle. There are a couple manticores. So I hope I didn't spoil that for anyone. I mean, if a module's been out 50 years, I think it's past the point where, you know, you could be like, oh, no, you spoiled it for me. Now, White Plume Mountain actually did get a 25th anniversary edition. And frankly, it didn't really uh, add anything. Now, one thing you've got to ask when you're buying modules is about writing and highlighting and damage on the inside, things that are cut out or colored, because uh, sometimes things, it'll be like, oh, this is a really good deal. Well, it's actually not a good deal because it's a play copy, which, like I said, my collection is nothing to really get excited about. It's all incredibly beat up. It's so bad. Like, if it were in pristine condition, it'd be awesome. All right, so anyway, uh, and then just mundane, Mammoth, Mastodon, why do those get two injuries? A masher, which is a, like a, an eel thing that crushes things with its teeth. A Medusa, again, uh, that's hailing from Greek myth. And, you know, the, the original Medusa was ugly. It was not beautiful. Of course, we've uh, made Medusas into beautiful creatures. Uh, this one, in the fifth edition book, is actually not that gorgeous. Let's see if we can focus, focus that in. Man, I am losing it. Come on. There you go. Mirror. All right, anyway, uh, Medusa. Mephits actually came later. Uh, and I'm going to say uh, Mephits. And they appear in a lot of different modules because they're kind of cool. They're these um, original, like, elementals 
are earth, air, fire, water. Well, the para-elemental planes are the things that are between those. So at the border of uh, water and earth, you get, um, uh, you get ooze. And so these are all para-elemental creatures, just so you know. And so I'm whipping out the old monster manual, too. And I'm wondering if I'm going to find Mephit in here. Oh, here's Magman. There you go. And that probably appeared in an adventure, and I really don't know. Oh, and a were shark too. That's really nice. Sea wolf. All right. Uh, what was I looking for? I was looking for methods. And I don't think I'm going to find them. Yep, they're not, they're not in here. So, frankly, I really don't know. Are they in the Fiend folio? Well, now I'm kind of obsessed about it. M, 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 M. I went too far. By the way, you do, you do really well to get these old books and just pick them up. Oh, here you go. Here's all your methods. Yep, that's what I thought. That was the original artwork for those. Uh, a lot of very creative, very interesting creature. Don't know where they're from. Let's get back to the original monster manual. Here, let's flick through this here. We're kind of comparing and contrasting. A lot of pages for methods. Merfolk, marrow, ugh. Just your basics. Mimics, everybody loves mimics. Mimics do appear in the original monster manual. Uh, let's go ahead and find those out. Uh, you know, we're, we're gonna go back. Here you go, Mimic. Here's the original art for Mimic. Check that out. Yep, and then of course you have Mind Flare. We're gonna talk about them. And of course I'm gonna mention Lords of Madness again. So, um, all right, we're gonna get to Mind Flayers. Men. Now, men are notably absent in any modern version of the Monster Manual, but in Gary Gygax's day, it was like coming across humans was really a big deal. And, there, and he made up a lot of different types. Uh, bandit, so here's just generic men. Bandit, berserkers, caveman, buccaneer. Buccaneers was a group you could come up and grant. Dervishes, uh, what else? Merchants, pilgrims. Tribesmen, and uh, I think that's it. Maybe I'm missing something, but anyway, uh, men was like a big deal, and you would come across them quite a bit. They figured into the modules, and uh, in my uh, book that I'm writing, uh, humans play a really big part uh, in the world of Atlantis. So mind flayers. So in Lords of Madness. They uh, go into Mind Flayer culture a lot. Mind Flayers aren't from this earth. They're actually refugees, like they're uh, exiles or castaways, you might say. And so since they can't all eat brains, there's not enough brains to go around, they, what they'll do is they'll have this like, little auditorium and all the Mind Flayers will gather and they'll bring a victim out. There's a table in the middle and the table is uh, in halves. So they put the head of the person up through the middle of the table and then close the table and lock it in place. And then a mind player comes out and eats the guy's brain really slowly. So that, and then he telepathically transmits the sensation to everyone else in the room. So that's one of the many, many, many absolutely horrific things in the book Lord's Madness, which you absolutely must get. Uh, Minotaur, Mold, uh, as we've said before, a lot of these dungeon hazards that even though they have stats, they're really just, they're really just hazards. So you had uh, yellow mold and brown mold. And uh, yellow mold, uh, if I remember right, absorbs heat. Flaming on when form, hold on. Nope, I am wrong. All right, I think, is that brown mold? Hold on. Uh, golden brown in color, kind of stuff out of all right, well, I can't read this to go along. So they are uh, hazards. And then, of course, the Morgoth has just disappeared, and he is a very weird creature that is uh, underwater. So really what they've done is they've taken creatures that are very circumstantial, and they just, they just got rid of them. Uh, mule, mummy. Ha-ha! <laughs> the old mummy. So they did, a, they did a lot with it, actually. I think they've done a really good job. So I talked about Mind Flayers. They certainly explain them a lot better. Minotaur. Oh, Modrones. We'll talk about those guys in a minute. Uh, mummies, one page. Two pages. Three pages for mummies. So the modern monster manual, I really, 
I really love it in a way because they, they go into a lot more depth. They get rid of a lot of things. The original monster manual was like two or three monsters per page, which was great because they were trying to get 300 and some odd monsters into a 112 page thing. And of course, that's all we had. And it was really was plenty to sort of capture your imagination and, uh, and, and excite it and think about different things. There's whole adventures have been written on Nagas, which we'll talk about in just, uh, just a minute. Uh, do I want to say anything more about Mind Flayers? Yeah, Mind Flayers have always, always, always been bad news. I love what they've done with them. They've done uh, through the expansion books, like Volos or whatever. They've really fleshed them out. And you can make a Mind Flayer lair be absolutely an ab uh, a complete nightmare for a party of almost any level. I mean, they're just that good. Now, I remember I had a DM where... Uh, our group had gotten so stupid powerful that this DM was like, well, okay, let's see what I can do. And uh, what he did is he created an ambush with mind flares where because we were packed together, the cones overlapped everybody. And it just, it turned into so many save. We can only fail on a one because of all our rings of protection, cloaks of protection, and all that. And so he basically just, you know, did it that way. Like if you, if you make your party roll enough saving throws, they're going to fail one. And in modern d and it's just been so... Uh, oh, it's just been so toned down and made so easy. And, and it's okay. I totally get it. They have a wider audience, and they've got to go to sort of that broad uh, appeal. And uh, frankly, uh, by the way, as a pitch, I have a Facebook page called OPDM, and also a corresponding blog page where I put, I basically am creating a monster manual, 5th edition, for DMs who need stuff to challenge their players. And I, got, I get a lot of inspiration here from the old monster manual of how it used to be. And uh, so there you go. Okay, so let's go to the ends. We are at minute 17. Oh, I wonder if I'll make it. Probably not. So anyway, yeah, the Nagas are still there. They have Bone Naga, Spirit Naga, and Guardian Naga. And in the original one, there's a Water Naga. That one's evil, and one's neutral, and one is good. So I think, which one did they get rid of? Neutral, Chaotic, Lawful Good, Guardian Naga. Yeah, yeah, they, they still have the good one. Um, and it's the Water Naga, which was neutral, that now doesn't appear. And instead, they got the Bone Naga. And, of course, you have a Nightmare. Nightmares and Night Hags. I already talked about Hag. Neo Otiug. It's like a bigger Otiug. And then uh, Nightmares. Nymph Nixie. I wonder if those appear in the new thing. Nymphs are a great creature. They come from Greek mythology. And uh, they just have a lot of uh, imagination to them. But, lo and behold, uh, they're not in here. And that's probably okay because what did they do? There's no nudity. There's no raciness. And in fact, in the original Monster Manual, there wasn't anything here to, you know, get excited about. But there certainly was enough for parents to be like, hey, you know, why is there no top on this, on this black and white drawing of uh, a woman? So anyway, it's all just, it's all just so silly. So um, Nothic actually comes from somewhere else. I cannot remember. I'm pretty sure it's not in the Fiend Folio. Um, and that, the, so there we go. We got all the way to the O's. Oh, Ochre Jelly. Ochre Jelly has been moved to Oozes. Oh, oh, sorry. We finished the ends. I'm not going to do the O's on this one. And um, there we go. I just, it makes me wonder where Nothic came out. Is that in the Monster Manual too? Oh boy. Not doing a very good job. So here we go. P, I'm looking in the Monster Manual too, guys. Yeah, the Nothic, I remember seeing it for the first time. It was in like 4th edition that I saw Nothic for the first time. And I do not think it's in there. there yeah, no. yeah, I have no idea. But the Nothic's a pretty cool creature. At least they gave it an interesting power. All right, uh, on to the O's next.